The Devil May Cry series is one of my favourite game franchises of all time. Every game in the series has something going for it. Devil May Cry 1, whilst dated by today's standards, is still pretty decent, it holds up fairly well, and it also set the standard for the genre. Devil May Cry 3 really upped the ante massively with its Dante stand switching gameplay, its more intricate story and level design, and it also added iconic characters to the series such as Virgil and Lady, who are still popular to this day. Devil May Cry 4 is where I got in the series, so I might have a slight bias to it, but I really, really love Devil May Cry 4. It added a new playable character to the series in Nero, who had a different and more simplistic playstyle than Dante, but was a ton of fun to play with and had a sort of easy to learn, difficult to master sort of gameplay style. It basically improved on a lot of the things from the previous games, with its main flaw being the fact that its rush level design basically has you backtracking through the entire game. There is also a couple of small sections in the game with some puzzles that are kind of annoying, they're not really difficult, they're just a time waste. Despite all that, absolutely great game, definitely worth playing. And the newest entry in the series is Devil May Cry 5, which is... I'm just going to say it's the best hack and slash game ever made, and um, yeah, I'll be holding all of the games in this genre to that standard. And that's about all I'll go into it, because otherwise I'll be sat here all day talking about how good that game is. Even the DMC Devil May Cry reboot isn't awful despite the controversy at the time. It's got a fun They Live story, decent level design and soundtrack, some cool art design here and there. Honestly, and it's been said by a lot of people, but the main problem with that game is that it's Devil May Cry, it's meant to be a reboot. If it had been a completely new IP, played exactly the same, it would have probably been pretty well received and split off into its own series by now, but yeah, didn't happen. Thankfully, they went back to the original series on that, and we got Devil May Cry 5, so all is right in the world. So the one game I've left out there is Devil May Cry 2, which, unlike the rest of the games in its family, is remarkable for all the wrong reasons, and it's the one that has absolutely nothing good going for it. Even if you've barely heard of this game or the franchise, you've probably heard of what an absolute mess this game is. If you look at reviews of this game compared to others in the series, you'll notice it's poor scoring in comparison. And there's no divide in the fandom that this is easily the worst game in the series. You might have also heard stories and rumours that the development of this game was absolutely shambolic. With its original director being replaced by Hideaki Itsuno six months before Deadline. And well, if you've played this game then you'll definitely believe that it was finished in six months. So the first time I played this game was when the HD collection released over a decade ago and I struggled to beat it at the time due to how difficult it is and just how boring it is. So I'd always wanted to come back to the game and play through it again at some point just to see if I was doing something wrong the first time and let's just say I definitely was. Alongside this there was also a video that came out by Crobcat, Crobycat called Real Gamers Don't Skip Devil May Cry 2 which is a 12 minute video showing basically how overpowered the guns are and how badly programmed this game is. This video really piqued my interest, so I decided to reinstall the game on my PS4 and speedrun it through one night. Since it's a very short game, especially if you skip all the cutscenes like I did this time, you aren't missing anything interesting in the story since for some reason they made Dante a strong, silent, edgy type in this game, and there's very little story-wise or anything to do with the actual Devil May Cry lore that ever comes back from this game. At the time I was playing this as well, I was also watching some Steven Seagal movie reviews and I was inspired by Steven Seagal to be as lazy as possible during this run and to barely move when possible in homage to the majority of his films. So throughout this video and particularly on the bosses, I've tried to find the laziest and cheesiest ways to beat them. So with the game's history out the way and with my history with the game out the way and everything else, now we can start the Devil May Cry 2 experience slash gun only slash lazy as possible Steven Seagal style run. So I decided to let the first level play out during some of that intro ramble so you can see in its full glory how broken the firearms are in this game. They stun lock nearly every enemy in the game, including some bosses. Meanwhile, your sword, which is meant to be your primary weapon and how you play the game, doesn't stun enemies, doesn't really do any more damage. It just makes no sense when you think about it. My original intention of this run was to only use the pistols, and it's definitely possible to do that, but I ended up making it just a gun-only run because I was getting so bored with how long it was taking to kill some enemies. 
that I just was like, let's just use all of the firearms. And I mentioned earlier in the video about this game being difficult, but let me explain myself. This game is difficult if you try and play it like it's meant to be played, or like any other Devil May Cry game, and use your sword. Trying to play as stylish as possible is an absolute nightmare because you barely have any combos, upgrades, new swords, and anything else that would help you throughout the game. But the main difficulty actually comes from the lock-on feature in this game, which if you played any other Devil May Cry game or any other hack and slash genre game, what happens is you attack freely when you're not locked onto something, so you'll kind of just swing about. You can hit things, but you won't be locked onto a target. And then you'll usually have, say, a shoulder button that will lock onto an enemy, and you can switch between enemies by tilting a stick or something like that. This means that you can focus on specific enemies that might have healing abilities, might have uh, need something specific to take them out. It's a, just a no-brainer. It's a, such a common thing that I actually feel daft even talking about it. But in this game, you have the opposite effect, where you automatically lock onto enemies as soon as they get close to you, and then what would be the lock-on button in other games actually makes you free attack, so you don't lock onto them. So it's confusing to play, and it makes no sense why it does that anyway. And there's a lot of times in this game when you have to attack certain enemies or you need to try and open a door or something like that in a time limit you need to hit a specific object but it's impossible whilst you're being attacked because you automatically lock onto enemies and there's no way to lock onto any objects or anything like that especially difficult with flying enemies as well which there's a lot of in this game thankfully again the firearms do make that a bit easier combining this with the awful camera and muddy textures i realize this is an old game but it's not the textures in terms of the graphics are bad, it's just the art style, the colours, the design of this game is absolutely horrible compared to the other ones in this series. It just makes it absolutely atrocious to play. There's a few parts that I'll mention specifically where it becomes a problem, but it's just absolutely hilarious to think that if you try and play a hack and slash Devil May Cry game as it's meant to be played, you end up making the game so much more difficult for yourself. And this is basically the whole game, running from area to area, collecting random items to unlock doors and move on. Apparently the original Devil May Cry was going to be a spin-off of Resident Evil, and then when this sequel came out this was going to be a spin-off of it as well. And with some of these earlier games, with the level design, you can definitely see it. But at least the other games have decent combat, fun characters and other things going on to carry it. This game has none of it, the combat's bad, the characters are bad, just everything is bad about this game. And at the end of that level, I managed to get a B rank, playing in the least stylish, most branded way possible. So, hey, that's pretty good. Mission 2 starts with us underground for some reason. You fight through this European-looking area for most of the game, trying to go after some flamboyant villain. We'll talk about him a little bit later, because he's a big problem with this game. Whilst every now and again, you'll have a cutscene with Lucia or Lucia, whoever she is who you can play as once you've beaten the game, but why bother? I'm probably one of the few people on the planet that's actually played this game more than once at this point. For the rest of this video, I'm not going to waste your time or mine by showing levels in their entirety anymore. I'll just show you any parts that are relevant, which basically means any parts of the game that are bad, and there are a lot of them. This part made me laugh and I had to put it in because I forgot about it until I was doing the editing, but the awful camera angles rear its head here because when you press it to go forward, once you go through a door, and if it flips the camera around, it doesn't also flip the control around as well, so you end up going back and forth through the same doorway over and over again if you're holding forward or holding backwards. So what you have to do is press forwards to go through the door, know that you're going to be on the other side of it with the camera the other way around, let go, and then readjust your controls. It's just... It's a tiny thing, it's nothing game-breaking, but it's just another thing that this game does poorly. There's some new enemies in this section, like the Pyromancer, but again, everyone just gets juggled, like we're playing Tekken using the firearm, so... What the actual enemies do, what they look like, what their abilities are, honestly makes absolutely no difference in this game. <laughs> And unfortunately, this is where the run comes to an end. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this game constantly locks onto enemies without you doing anything. 
So when you're trying to hit an object or smash a wall open, it'll instead make you go for them, including enemies that are off screen, enemies that are in the air. The range is actually insane. So yeah, uh, that's going to be the end of the video. So I will see you on the next one. Alright, of course not. You can see the length of the video down at the bottom anyway, so I don't know why I'm wasting my time on this joke. I did debate on restarting the entire run at this point, but honestly I thought, who the fuck even cares? The game devs barely put any effort into this game, so why should I? It's not like I'm going for some sort of world record speed run or anything, so I was just like, sod it, let's just carry on. In the game's defense this time, I probably should have tried to kill all the enemies first, but I just figured they're so slow, they're so easy to kill, I'll just try to get through these rooms as quick as possible. So towards the end of the mission, you're in this room, you get surrounded by enemies, it's absolutely no challenge at all because again, the guns are just so overpowered and they just juggle everything, it's quite funny. After you've beaten all the enemies, you will get attacked by these goat statue things at the top. These are one of the flying enemies in the game, which normally if you try to take them out with the sword are quite anointed because obviously trying to hit an airborne enemy when you can only stay up in the air for so long, you've only got so much of an air combo, becomes a bit of a challenge, but with the handguns, they're absolutely ridiculous to beat because they get stun locked. They have a lot of health, you would think they would class as like a mini boss, so they wouldn't have the same sort of attributes as a normal enemy you think they wouldn't get stun log like a normal enemy but that is not the case once you've defeated all the enemies in this room you will unlock your devil trigger this is the first devil trigger that you get in this game there's a couple of them and this one allows you to fly up which you only ever actually need for this room and we get another b rank which is surprisingly high yet again mission three starts with us back in the town area we're quickly attacked by a group of enemies that are just the same things we've been fighting for the past two levels the difference this time is that whilst you're being attacked, you're also having to dodge these spouts of fire that are coming out the floor as well. But it's not really a challenge because the fire is completely telegraphed and it also shoots out the floor so slow that you can basically dodge it whilst firing your guns, which is like the slowest walking speed possible in this game. So as long as you're moving in a direction whilst firing, you'll eventually kill all the enemies, dodge all the fire. There's a couple of goat things at the end of the road that don't attack you for some reason. So just walk up to them, shoot them a couple times, they'll be grounded and then you can just go to town on them with your guns because they'll be stun locked again. Once all the enemies are defeated, the door will open and you can go into this train station room for some reason. In here you'll be quickly trapped and you'll have to fight a boss to get out. Now this boss <laughs> is an absolute joke. I mean you're going to hear me say this quite a lot throughout the video but... The bosses in this game are just so badly designed. Again, I, I'm trying to go out of my way to show how bad they are designed and try and be as cheesy as possible with them. But for the most part, a lot of these bosses are really slow moving. They get stuck on the environment a lot. They don't seem to attack you anywhere near as much as they should. Compare this to some of the bosses in the other games, like say Virgil, who I know is like the final boss in most of the games, but he is like so quick so aggressive has so many attacks like just doesn't give you a second whereas someone like this this orangutan gorilla thing just walks slowly towards you gets stuck on the environment doesn't use a ranged attack until you get it to about half health just doesn't really offer much of a challenge basically again your challenge would be if you play normally is just to hit it a few times jump back but again using the firearms means you can just stand so far away from him that he can't really do anything about it he has quite a lot of health which is why i started using the devil trigger because it just sped up the fight but eventually you'll just take him out with your handguns anyway because again like i say he's just such an easy boss to beat the main problem with playing this way is that it's not difficult it's just the bosses are such bullet sponges and have such high health that it becomes a chore trying to kill them and you have to just fight your own boredom to actually beat them once you beat him, the boss will drop a key, and I won't lie, I had absolutely no idea what I was meant to be doing here, so I ran around for a quite a while, trying to look for somewhere to go. I didn't put any of that in the video, because it's really boring, but it turns out there's another door next to this building that you open with the key, and that's the end of the level, so that was actually a really, really short level. You fight them enemies at the start, and then you fight the boss. That's it. I mean, I'm not going to complain, I'm, I'm quite happy with the short levels in this game, but... I guess it's kind of like a running thing in Devil May Cry that some of the levels are really long and some of the levels are basically just a boss fight. So this game has quite an unbalanced campaign in that regard. A lot of the missions are set up in that structure. 
At the start of mission four, we're heading towards the seafront, and I was exploring around up the side of these hills and these buildings, and you're attacked by these monkey demons that you think would be able to climb up to you or jump up to you, considering that they are monkeys. But instead they don't, so you can just stand up the top of one of these buildings or platforms or whatever and just fire down at them. The problem is actually just the angle of trying to actually hit them, so you'll probably have to drop down after a while, but for the most part they don't even attack you when they're stood right next to you, as you can see in a lot of this footage. The section takes a really long time because the, the monkey demons just keep spawning over and over again. I thought after a while that it was one of these areas where it's just infinitely respawning until you break through this little bit of rubble, but that's not the case actually, so take out all the demons, smash out the rubble, and then you can carry on to the next part of the level. Now, this fucking section, you could probably hear me talking through like a face palm here, because this is one of the sections of the game that I remembered quite vividly from my original playthrough almost a decade ago. You have to hit this like floating triangle obelisk thing and these come up again in the game. I'm going to be talking about these things probably more than any boss or enemy or anything else in this game, right? But you have to hit that object to start this like little puzzle thing where you need to get to this doorway before it shuts. Now I try to hit it a couple times there then I remembered, oh yeah, you need to go get another devil trigger that lets you run quicker. So I go into the room, you can see I'm fighting the enemies, I watch the cutscenes, uh, you clear all the enemies out, you can go into this room, you go into this room and that lets you get the new devil trigger. Everything's going as intended, everything as the game designers have planned it out to be. All good. No, the problem is, as I've said many times and I will say many times in this video, trying to hit things accurately in this game is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> This really is the most difficult thing in this game, is not trying to kill enemies, is not trying to dodge enemies, not trying to do X, Y, and Z. The most difficult part of this game is trying to hit objects like this for a puzzle. You can see clearly that I'm stood right next to it, I'm literally running into it, I can't move at some parts. You can't shoot it because that doesn't do anything. So. I end up running around for, apparently it was only six minutes when I'm looking back through the footage, but it felt like I was here for an hour trying to figure out what I was meant to be doing. And I knew what I was meant to be doing, but I thought, have I missed like a room that I need to do something else in? Is there another object that you need to hit first? And no, that is not the case at all. You just have to be stood at the exact angle that the game thinks, okay, well you now can trigger this obelisk thing to work it makes absolutely no sense you can see multiple times that i'm stood next to it. i use a devil trigger i use the guns i'm swinging at it nothing is happening at all this one is really bad there's ones later on in the game where you have to hit them in a certain order in a certain time limit for them to work and they're they're even worse than this i don't know what they were thinking when they thought we'll put these puzzles in the game but then also make them almost impossible to do properly because they're just designed so poorly. Like, you cannot design your game like this at all. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Forget everything else. Forget the bad AI. Forget the bad combat, the bad story, everything else. This is, like, fundamentally, like, game-breaking stuff. And unfortunately, there's a lot of it in this game, so I'm going to be talking about it a lot. So after all that wasted time and annoying level design, finally get through it. The actual puzzle is quite easy once it activates. You just have to turn your devil trigger on and then you can run to this little castle bridge thing. Once you go through it, go through the door and you'll be attacked by the boss, which is this like sea demon tentacle monster thing. Now I won't lie, I died a couple times trying to kill this thing because I was trying to cheese it as much as possible. You can see that I just basically run up to where its head is, thinking, okay, it won't be able to hit me there. But it has this like poison gas attack, so the, the devs actually thought this one through for the most part, but then it turns out if you just stand all the way to the left or the right of it, in the corner near the wall, the tentacles barely swing at you, and when they do, you can just either jump over it, or sometimes the tentacles will just kind of like phase through you because the hitbox is really wonky. Again, like a lot of the bosses in this game, it takes a while to beat it using the pistols, especially this early on since they're not upgraded at all. But this is a very safe and cheesy way to beat the boss, so I was like, I'm gonna have to just spend the time to do it. And since I was watching Steven Seagal reviews in the background, I was kind of just paying more attention to that anyway. 
So once you beat the boss that's in the level, you'll also unlock the shotgun once you go through this doorway as well, which is going to be handy for some later encounters. Mainly because it just speeds up a lot of the close range encounters when you're trapped in a room with demons. It's not actually because you really need a shotgun or any of the other weapons that like you do in the other games. As I say, the main difficulty with these encounters is trying not to be absolutely bored to death. And yes, I realise that I'm the only person to blame for this. So now we're on to mission 5. Just before the level starts, I decided to upgrade the pistols since they have the most range. They probably get the most use out of the firearms for most of the game. So I figured upgrading them is going to be helpful. At the very start of this level, you're attacked by these two wolf mini bosses, which are an absolute joke as you can see on the screen because they just seem to jump around you in a set pattern, which is almost like a square sort of shape. And they just don't attack you. I think they hit me once when I was stood still, but then I just ended up backing myself into a corner, which normally would be like the worst move ever. But once I did that, they had even, they were already struggling to hit me. But once I backed myself into a corner, they had even more trouble trying to hit me. Very strange enemy AI. I, I don't even know what to say, really. I guess the footage speaks for itself. I just find this level such a weird one for devil may cry i mean the actual level design is really bad like this is one of my least favorite parts of the game but I'm, i mean this from like a, a artwork standpoint like an art design standpoint like it's such a I, I just it just feels out of place for a devil may cry game for me like the start bit where you're in this like european gothic town feels very fitting like there's parts in devil may cry 4 that are very reminiscent of that um, even 5 has this kind of like British sort of, I don't know, it's just, there's just something like very like bland metropolis metal cityscape thing going on in this level that I just feel, it just feels out of place. Yeah, again, it just feels more like this is like Resident Evil or Dino Crisis or something more than, than a Devil May Cry game. So we fight a weakened version of the boss from the train station earlier. It works exactly the same, it just has less health this time, which is nice. You can see that you can just get it stuck on the wall. If you just stand on the the pavement above it, it tries to jump up to you, but it just can't for the most part. And with the shotgun being that close range just makes it an absolute piece of cake. After this section, you get attacked by one of the like strangest devil may cry enemies i think in the entire series you get attacked by like a zombie tank which i know i've just been talking about resident evil but this really does feel like an enemy from a different game because as the name says devil may cry these are meant to be devils are meant to be demons but in this game you get attacked by zombie tanks and zombie helicopters it just feels yeah very very out of place this level they're also really annoying to fight because they're actually really easy to beat. You can just run under them and they can't hit you, but then randomly they can hit you. They can shoot through each other, which is a problem, and they can just randomly hit you with their artillery even though you stood in a place where you shouldn't be able to get hit by them. But then there's points where they just can't do anything to you. I don't know, it's, it's just really, really bad. And then this is another area where I got lost again because this level, as I say, is just horrible from a game design standpoint. You're given so little feedback about where you need to go. You kill them tanks and then there's just absolutely nothing. It doesn't tell you to go anywhere. It doesn't zoom in on anything. It doesn't say anything. There's no cutscene. I eventually found where I was meant to go by complete accident just by running down this closed road that one of the tanks was in. Again, why would you need to run down this road? Why would you think that this is the way to go? It's completely closed off in the distance. There's no enemies actually down there. Like, the tank's quite far up that road. There's no orbs down there. There's no other items. You just end up running down there, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, you're in the right area. It really reminds me a lot in this game of that Hunt Down the Freeman game, where it's kind of just like you just need to know to run down like random corridors and hallways and stuff like that to trigger the next thing. And again, we're attacked by a zombie vehicle this time. The infested chopper and get used to seeing this thing because you must fight it about six times in this level. And yeah, it's just ridiculous how many times you have to fight this thing in a Devil May Cry game. Normally trying to kill this thing with a sword is a pain in the ass because again, trying to hit airborne enemies with a sword is annoying, but 
Using your guns, using your devil trigger, it's just an absolute piece of piss because it can barely hit you. After that fight, we move into this hotel lobby for some reason, and once again, you get attacked by a zombie helicopter. This one is just as easy as the last one. Due to the angle that it attacks you from, it's always shooting upwards, and since the floor and the side of the wall is in the way, it pretty much just can't hit you. Once you beat that chopper, keep jumping up the floors, make your way to the top of the hotel, where you'll be greeted by, guess what, another zombie helicopter. So that's three that you've had to fight now, all exactly the same. None of them do anything different, none of them get any more difficult. All it changes is the location, which doesn't really make any difference. I guess the, the location makes this one slightly more annoying because for the most part it's off screen, so it's difficult to tell where it even is, where you're meant to be aiming, are you actually hitting it, but... Yeah, there's, there's no difference in any of these fights. It really tries to, like, shoot at you, but it can barely do anything. Then once you beat it there, you have to fight it again on a different rooftop. I'm just in awe watching this footage back because I completely forgot about how many times that you have to fight this helicopter. <laughs> once you beat it here, there's a sort of platforming section where you have to climb up two buildings. It's not a very good section because I don't think Devil May Cry was ever very good at platforming and this game's probably the worst for it because of the camera angles, but after fighting the same helicopter four times in a row, I'm grateful for something different. I just want to point out as well how little health I've had for most this level and it's not even been an issue. I've not even tried to like go out of my way to get health or anything. I only end up grabbing this green orb here because there was some red orbs like in the way once you jumped down so you kind of had to get them. But once you climb up this final building you're attacked by <laughs> the fucking zombie helicopter once again. This time it's classed as like an actual boss fight, so it's got a lot more health and it tries to do a little bit more stuff, but again, it doesn't really doesn't really change the fight at all. It still just fires machine gun bullets randomly. Its missiles don't really lock on here. It just is the exact same fight in a different location and the boss has more health. Absolutely great. That is peak game design. That's what people want. That's what people ask for when they say they want more difficult enemies. It just gives them more health. Anyway, it goes down really easy, and thankfully that is the end of the level, which means no more helicopter fights for the rest of the game. Thank fuck for that. Mission 6 starts with us backtracking through the previous level, because all these Devil May Cry games love backtracking. And very quickly into the level, we're attacked by whatever the hell this thing is, I really have no idea. It's such an ugly design. For the majority of this fight, you can just run up to it and shoot it. It can't really hit you with this beam attack thing that it does. I don't know if it's you shooting it down to a certain amount of health that makes it change phase, or if it's just because you stood there for so long, but eventually it will change its trajectory to start shooting closer to itself, and it'll also use this kind of like shotgun blast thing. But at that point, you can just stand further back and then it can't hit you, so either way, it can't really do anything to you. Once you've defeated it in that form, its head falls off, and then you have to fight it again. What the motherfucking head fell off? This version of it is slightly more challenging because it uses a few more attacks and it actually moves about, but it's incredibly slow and you can just walk around to the back or the side of it and shoot it. So when I say slightly more difficult, I am talking about the smallest, smallest degree of difficulty because it's not difficult at all. And once that's dead, that's the end of the level. So again, a nice quick level to get this over with. Mission 7 starts with Dante in this factory for some reason, which again just feels more like Resident Evil than Devil May Cry, but I'll stop going on about that. You've got to fight your way to the other side of this room to jump on this pipe and slide down it, which is probably about the closest thing to a Dante-like moment that you actually get in this game, except that he doesn't say anything when he's on it, so that's kind of disappointing. Out in this area, there's a load of flying enemies, which are easy to kill, but they're difficult to actually hit because they are so far off screen that even the guns have difficulty hitting them. You make your way through this section, hit some orb thing to activate some other thing and grab it. I don't remember what any of this is about, and it doesn't really matter, to be honest. In this section, you do get a new sword, which won't be seeing any use in this playthrough. Actually, that is a lie. I did switch to it at some points to see if it had any better look at hitting the obelisk things. 
news flash. It does not, but I figured I had to give it a go since it is a larger sword. Okay, I know I said I would stop mentioning Resident Evil, but this lift section, I mean, come on. Really? But it is funny that you also get attacked by little bats instead of anything that actually could prove to be a challenge. So again, just the ineptitude on display here is amazing. Once you're at the bottom of the lift, you have to get on this train because of course you do. And I think this area is on a timer rather than just you have to kill all the enemies and then you can leave it. Because after a while, no enemies were spawning, but I was just stuck on the train still. So I was just running up and down the wall. After a while, it just plonks you outside. You go back up another lift section with zero enemies between here and there. So I'm not even going to bother showing any of that. Then you go through this door and the level kind of ends abruptly. Not really complaining since that means we're one step closer to finishing this game, but it just seems to end in random parts some of these levels. Mission 8 follows on from the previous cutscene with the main villain, which we're not going to bother watching because who cares. He does summon this cool looking Minotaur boss who looks like he's actually from a Devil May Cry game. Despite looking the part of a Devil May Cry boss, he definitely doesn't act like it. He's actually one of the easiest bosses in the game. He does charge at you every now and again. But for the most part, he just swings his hammer around that pulls you into him. And whilst he's doing that, he'll summon this ring of fire around him. So all you need to do to beat him and avoid damage is just to walk backwards and keep shooting. He won't change his tactics up at all. So just like all the other bosses in this game, he's just a patience game, really. Yeah, really one of the worst bosses in the game. Thankfully, when he dies, that is the end of the mission. So we're getting closer and closer to beating this mess. Mission 9 starts with us back in the factory, which is now starting to collapse because of course it is. So the gimmick of this mission is that you need to escape the factory in the time limit. Now this time limit is really long, like it's way over generous in some ways, so you don't have to worry about it. But at the same time, you also have to deal with these obelisk things again that you need to activate so many of them to go through a certain door. Which means that you might actually have to worry about the time limit because that is going to be a problem. It's already difficult enough trying to hit these obelisks when there's no enemies about, but as I mentioned earlier, this level has flying demons outside where these obelisks are. So that means that you have to kill them because otherwise Dan is going to be trying to swing at enemies that are like off screen constantly. So ended up wasting quite a lot of time trying to shoot down these enemies enough to at least where you're not automatically targeting them the whole time. So probably about five minutes or something like that. If this was any other Devil May Cry game, you could probably just do stinger attacks over and over again and you'd be able to do it within like two seconds, but not this game. Once you hit all the obelisks, you can go through the shutter door, go through the factory. There's nothing noteworthy in there, so I didn't bother showing any of it. Until you get to the end of the level where there's this big plane, and if you go into this plane and hit this crate, you will get the rocket launcher. This is going to be very, very handy for some of the bosses later on. After that, jump towards the hangar door, and that is the end of the level. Mission 10 starts with another one of my favourite sections of this game. You're in this open graveyard area with these large metal doors that you know you need to open. To open them two doors, you guessed it, you have to hit two of these triangle obelisk things. The problem with this, even more than the other sections, is that you have to hit them both within like 10 seconds of each other or something like that. That's bad enough. But then the enemies also infinitely respawn in this area, which means killing all the enemies isn't really going to help you because they'll just come back. As I've said, Dante will target enemies from miles away through walls and stuff like that. So it's really, really difficult to try and hit these things, especially if some of the enemies kind of respawn or wander over near them. And because of the slim window that you have to activate both of them, it just makes this section an absolute nightmare. I decided to use the speed devil trigger, which did help a little bit because it meant that I could get over to the other one and start swinging randomly and hope that I hit it. And after what seemed like an absolute eternity, I eventually managed to get them both activated, which then opened the metal doors in the middle of the room, which means that you have to activate another orb thing. Thankfully, these blue ones are easier to hit than the other ones. This opens up a large underground area in the middle of the room, but before you can even start moving over there, you are dragged underground into this area that has these savage golems, which are easy to kill because they're really slow and don't really do anything. Once you kill them, the boss shows up, which is this moth demon thing. 
Now, the boss itself isn't difficult at all because it's a flying enemy, and flying enemies in this game are annoying to hit, but don't seem to really do anything attack-wise. The problem with this area is these lava things that come out of the ground. They'll just appear out of nowhere, grab you, and do about 70% of your health, and you have no way of getting out of them. I pressed all the attack buttons. I tried using Devil Trigger because that's normally the way how you can easily get out of these things in other games. Absolutely nothing seemed to do anything. And they appear off screen as well, so they'll just be behind you and you have absolutely no feedback or indication that you're going to get attacked by one of them. So as you can see, I actually died here and had to go back to the beginning of the encounter, which is fun. So going back in the second time, I knew what to look out for, so I wasn't going to let it happen again. As I said, the moth boss is not difficult. It's just an annoying enemy with a lot of health that's kind of awkward to hit. I don't know why they designed so many enemies in this game that do not have sword play in mind at all when that is the whole point of the devil may cry series but this game doesn't really make any sense once you actually start thinking about it once you get its health down to zero it'll turn into a smaller moth that just sits there you can hit it a couple of times and it'll die and turn into red orbs you think that would be the end of the encounter but then you actually have to kill everything else in the room and there's like 10 of these lava demons that are just there so it's just a waste of time. These enemies are just really annoying because you can't go at them the entire time because they're underground. And as you've seen, they do ridiculous amounts of damage. They probably do the most damage of any enemy in the game, which is absolutely bizarre once you think of it. But once you kill all of them, the portal will open. You can go back up to the next level. Mission 11 starts with us going through that door. We just opened into this really weird underground area. Like, I, I don't know what it is, it just looks strange. I mean, it's interesting compared to a lot of the game. They at least put some effort in here, but yeah, I don't know, it's just weird. Shame there's no actual, like, interesting enemies down here. It's just the same things you've been fighting throughout the rest of the game. I realised at this point as well that I hadn't used a rocket launcher, so I decided to give it a go, and it's kind of ridiculous. Like, it obviously shoots slow, but it absolutely stun locks these enemies into another dimension, and it also does quite a lot of damage, so it's going to be very handy for a couple of points later on in the game. Quite a lot of this level isn't even combat related, it's just platforming and dodging environmental hazards, which I, I don't mind normally, but in this game I just absolutely hate. At this point, I got caught off guard by this like Indiana Jones boulder eyeball thing that surprisingly doesn't kill you. It actually teleports you into another section where you have to fight your way out of. So this time, knowing what was going to happen, I didn't get caught out by it. Which took us to the next section, which is this like meat grinder area, which I think I ended up looking up a guide as to what you have to do here. And I feel really stupid because all it is is just run up to this red wall and smash it down. But I was thinking like I had to do some sort of platforming on top of it or something. So yeah, I feel really dumb. I mean, playing this game and watching Steven Seagal reviews at the same time is just going to rot your brain. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. This next room has like quite a long platforming section in it with these appearing and disappearing tiles. Kind of reminds me of like bits in Devil May Cry 4. Again, it wouldn't be too bad, but the camera angle in this game is just absolutely awful. Like, it's so difficult to see the depth perception of where you're meant to be jumping that you end up just missing things half the time. After all that absolutely riveting platform and you end up at a boss fight, this is one of two bosses in the game, or actually one of two enemies in the entire game that are actually decent. This guy would be like an average boss in any other Devil May Cry game, but in this one he's like triple S rank because he actually is somewhat competently designed. I actually died at this point a couple of times trying to cheese him because I just kept hiding behind the throne at the top of the room and behind these pillars. But this guy can just attack you through objects, which is kind of cheap, but then I'm also trying to play like that as well, so I commend him for it. So this is actually one of the few enemies that you kind of had to play somewhat normally. You end up having to fight him later on in another level and that's why I realised that using the rocket launcher on him is just the cheesiest way to beat him so it probably would have worked here as well. Mission 12 is... oh god this level. This is the part of the game that I've been absolutely dreading to get through. Like I remember this part from my previous playthrough. It is like burned into my mind how bad this is. 
because of this boss now this boss is i guess technically not even a boss it's more of a puzzle boss because you don't actually have to fight it but this this section is where everything shit about this game comes to a head and i know i've been shitting on this game a lot but this is without a doubt the worst section of the game so you don't actually fight the thing in the middle that's shooting all the electricity out what happens instead is you have to break these triangular objects that float around it whilst this is happening the room is moving the orb is moving it's shooting out electricity so if you stand in particular spots or don't move along with it you'll get electrocuted and then you also have these skulls which attack you as well if you get too close to them or i think if you even if you just start attacking them they'll then go for you but they don't aggro to you just off the get-go it's an absolute nightmare because as i've said multiple times in this game you lock onto enemies over and over again so you constantly lock onto these skulls while you're trying to hit these triangular objects as well as i've mentioned in the previous level the depth perception and camera in this game is horrendous so you're trying to jump in the air hit these triangle things whilst not being hit by the skulls and the lightning as well so you're just basically jumping up in the air over and over again hitting triangle and just hoping that you're gonna hit the right object rather than the wrong object i tried using the firearms as well i tried using the devil trigger nothing seems to work other than jumping and hitting it with the sword as you can see i died on my first attempt trying to do it which i expected i died so many times on my original playthrough of this game luckily i was able to be on the second attempt which means i wasn't stuck here too long but god it's just i've got ptsd from this level it's so bad thankfully that's the worst part of the game out of the way and after that section the game throws you a softball and gives you an absolutely brain dead boss to fight the gimmick in this area is that the floor fills up with laser patterns that damage you and they start off relatively easy to dodge but after a while the whole floor gets covered but you can just stand in the corner out of the way of them and for the most part you'll probably never get hit by them the boss in this room moves and attacks so slowly that i think i'd whittled half of his health down before he got even halfway near me this is a good section for the rocket launcher because the enemy moves so slow and is such a large target that you don't have to worry about it moving out the way this is like the definition of a war of attrition this boss it's so easy to beat it's just more again if you will be bored to death by the time he dies once he's down just run upstairs and the level is over mission 13 is one of the weirdest parts of this entire game you end up fighting the main villain for some reason and this is such a bad boss fight that it's actually undescribable to an extent he doesn't really do anything he summons a couple of enemies that are really easy to kill and then he kind of just jumps around the room doing nothing except sipping wine i have absolutely no idea what is going on or why any of this is happening it's just so funny that i can't even be mad at it this level takes less than 90 seconds the only thing about this level that isn't funny is that it's not the end of the game we have to keep going Mission 14 has us back at the first area of the game, but now everything's kind of gone all wavy and weird and purple. This level absolutely fucking sucks as well, though. The objective of this level is to find a few of these orb things that will open a specific door. One of the main problems is, though, is that everywhere in this level looks exactly the same and there's no map feature, so it's difficult to tell where you have and haven't been. Especially since the enemies constantly respawn so you can't even use a clear area or a full area as an indicator of where you have and haven't been. And when you actually find the orbs, I mean just look at this part here where I'm trying to activate this orb that's in the air. Like, why did they design it like this? This orb has the usual problem where there's enemies about and you can't hit the orb properly. And since they constantly respawn, you don't really have any other option but to just try and hit it. At this point, I ended up hitting a few enemies with my sword because there was no other way around it. And I was just like, I don't care. Let me just finish this level, please. Once you find the final orb, it's in the air again. And I'm just showing a little bit of why I did that helm splitter attack over and over again. Rather than trying to use an aerial combo. Because as you can see, the aerial combo does the exact same thing that the sword does when it's on the ground you just end up missing the orb over and over again even though you literally have no way that you should be missing it 
Once all the orbs are activated, you can move on to the final area of the level, which reuses the spider boss from Devil May Cry 1, but he's way, way worse because he has Devil May Cry 2 programming, which means that he's brain dead, but he goes down easier than your mum, and that is the mission over. Mission 15 starts in the same area as the spider boss fight, but you have to clear all these enemies within the time limit, otherwise you end up failing and have to redo the entire encounter again. I didn't realise this is what it wanted you to do, I thought you had to survive for the full time limit so I ended up failing it the first time and had to redo the entire encounter over again. I won't show you the full encounter again for both our sakes since this video is going on long enough as it is, but once you beat all the enemies with some time to spare, jump into the beam of light and that is the mission clear. On to mission 16 which is getting agonisingly close to the end of the game. It starts with us in this hotel lobby again for some reason, like I thought we were meant to be in the demon world at this point. Fight your way through the enemies waiting for you, then you can get on these lift sections that take you up a few floors. They're kind of funny because there's such a small area and you get completely sworn, but just pulling out the shotgun and blasting one shot literally stun locks the entire room. A lot of this level is quite maze-like, so I was running back and forth trying to figure out where to go. I eventually stumble upon this room that has more of those purple eye boulder things that teleport you about. And it took me a few tries to get past this point because the difficulty in traversing this room is that the boulder things come at you from all angles off screen. So it's actually really difficult to tell when you're going to be hit by one of them. Once you get through at the end of the room, you have to jump up to the floor above it, pick up some item that does something and then use the item on this door which makes the world go all warped and weird again. A little bit further into the level you have to fight this guy again with his wolves. This is where I figured out that you can use the rocket launcher to just cheese this boss fight. As you've seen earlier the other guns don't stun lock him but the rocket launcher does and it does quite a lot of damage per shot as well so just stand back, blast him and he can't really do anything to you. Once you beat him, you have to run around this hotel hallway thing again, and it's very maze-like as I mentioned, so I've just cut all of that out because I was running back and forth quite a lot, trying to figure out where to go since everywhere looks the same. Eventually you'll find this dark hallway which has a lift at the end of it. This lift takes you up to the boss fight of this level, and this boss fight was one of the few parts of this game that I was absolutely dreading. You have to fight these three faces that do different elemental attacks. One does lightning, one does fire, one does ice attacks. It has that thing that a lot of hack and slash games do where you end up having to fight this boss that's really big while you're on a platform and you're like a distance away from them and you can't just attack them over and over again. You have to like wait for the boss to do specific things or like a cutscene to happen or just... I don't know, there's just something about this genre of game where they always have to have these kind of levels in it and these kind of boss fights in it they're just really annoying to make things even worse look at this situation i'm on very very low health but they have absolutely no health left at all so i stopped attacking because i was expecting the cutscene of the boss dying to happen and instead they killed me which is bad enough, but I thought, okay, I'll have to redo the fight. At least the second time around, I know what to expect. No, at this moment, the game crashed. That's bad enough, thinking that I have to do the entire level again. To make this even worse, I haven't saved in five missions. So once the game reboots, I have to do them all over again. I won't lie, I was fucking pissed at this point because I had to do some of the worst parts of this game over again. I won't subject you to watching it all, but it was 45 minutes before I got back to this boss again. And it was much easier the second time round once the game doesn't give you bullshit and also crash on you. After you beat the three-headed boss, that's the end of the level and it's on to mission 17, which is another fight with this main villain guy again. It's very, very slightly more difficult than the first fight because of the type of enemies that he spawns. They actually are a little bit of a challenge, but... Again, he doesn't do anything but just stand around sipping his wine and just shooting at you every now and again. So same tactic again, just run up to him, use your rocket launcher, use your devil trigger. He'll eventually go down. I just love once you beat him, the cutscene triggers and he looks at you kind of like, how did this happen? How was I defeated? It's like maybe if you'd done anything else other than sit there and drink wine, you might have won. Mission 18 is the final level of the game, thankfully. The level's in two stages, which are both boss fights. The first boss that you have to beat is this absolute mess of an amalgamation 
of other bosses that you've beaten throughout the game. It's not super difficult because it doesn't move, it just fires attacks at you, and a lot of the attacks are really easy to dodge, or you can just stand back and it won't hit you. I tried to be as lazy as possible on this boss fight, and I took a bit more damage than I probably should have, mainly from this bird part that shoots these red lasers at you. But yeah, he's not that difficult, he just has a lot of health and you have to beat every single section of him. Once you beat that shit pile of a boss, you actually have to fight the final boss of the game, who is pretty decent actually, especially for this game. He actually feels like a Devil May Cry boss. It is somewhat of a challenging final fight because there's no way to cheese him like there is with every other enemy in the game. But a big part of the difficulty as well is that your health carries over from the previous boss, so... If you're like me and let yourself get hit way too many times then you've got basically no chance of beating this guy unless you do it flawlessly. But the way to cheese it is just to let yourself die and restart the encounter. Once you restart the encounter on this boss you have full health and you can just wail on him. Once you beat the final boss that is the end of the game. Dante rides off into the sunset. You can replay it through as the other playable character but really why would you want to? I mean I'm just so grateful that it is over what an absolutely awful experience as i've stated so many times throughout this video this game is an absolute mess from start to finish every aspect is messed up and what's absolutely wild is if this doesn't look very fun to you playing this game as you're meant to is even worse this is actually the most efficient and optimized way to play the game i think the final thing i have to say about everything is just I'm so happy that the people that worked on this game actually got another crack at it with Devil May Cry 3 and they absolutely knocked out the park and then they followed it up with Devil May Cry 4 and 5 which are also great games as well. So the fact that this series continued after this game is just a miracle. Anyway, after all that, I think I need a drink or something stronger. But yeah, thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way at the end and suffered through this experience with me leave me a comment if you want if you hated this uh i also hated it so yeah we're on the same page there and uh yeah thanks again i'll see you on the next one